Well, hi, Ingrid. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for joining me today as part of our One Club Creative Month speaker series. We're so excited to have you join us. And I have my cup of tea ready for today's chat. <laughs> um, if you're ready, I'd love to get things started with an icebreaker. Awesome. I am, re I am ready and excited to be here. Perfect. So what is your favorite inclusive campaign that your agency has worked on? And what's the backstory? Huh. Well, it's hard to just pick one. I would say, I'll tell you two. Uh, I think one is, it's more about uh, diversity because obviously it, it targets Hispanics and it's a campaign we did for Nescafe uh, using uh, Ricky Martin as our spokesperson. We started about five years ago and it's one of those where very very few times in your career you get a, a campaign that it's multiple years uh, because it's so successful. And it's a campaign that really helped turn around a brand. I right? doubled the, the share in just a couple of years and today it, the brand continues to grow and we are in our sixth year of that campaign. So to me, that's one of our, one of my dearest, uh, my dearest successes because it truly made such a big impact on, on a brand. And more recently, uh, last year, we did a campaign for Donate Life California, which is an organ donation uh, organization. And as, uh, as, an agency, as an agency, we've always said that, that uh, it is our responsibility to give back mm -hmm. to, to our community because we are, you know, we are blessed uh, and, uh, and, and our, our people's talents should be used uh, in in a good way, you know, to to help to help others. So every year we try to pick one or two organizations to to do some meaningful work like that. And uh, and a couple of years ago we it, we chose Donate Life California because many of us had been touched by organ donation in different ways. Uh, so we uh, approached them. We did a campaign uh, called Second Chances. Not only did it increase uh, organ. Uh, registrations for over 20% over the months that it, that it happened, but uh, it, it gave us our most awarded campaign ever. Uh, we were in the process of, of doing it again this year, uh, but obviously COVID happened, so now we're hoping that we can do something like that next year. So I would say those are my, my, my two most favorite. That's amazing, and just to see the recognition that you got for, for doing that good work. It was really, really cool. So you have over 30 years of advertising experience in the U.S. organic market in Puerto Rico. At Casanova, you currently lead agency operations, managing offices in Costa Mesa, New York, Detroit, field teams in Dallas. Your, your accounts include Nestle USA, the U.S. Army, Coca-Cola, Chevrolet, the California Lottery, among others. Under your leadership, the agency has doubled in size from 45 to over 100 people and doubled its revenue. So what wisdom can you share with people aspiring to reach your level of success? Oh, I don't know about wisdom. <laughs> I would say, you know, it's, it's all about working hard, right? And, uh, and showing the value of what you bring, add value every, every conversation or every interaction you have with your clients and your partners. In our case, as a multicultural agency, we don't necessarily lead the conversations in many, in most cases. So in, we need to make sure that we are good partners. Uh, but that doesn't mean we just sit there quietly and agree with the, with the general agency, right? We're there to bring added value. We're there to be the voice of our consumer. Uh, to make sure that our consumer is is uh, not just uh, identified but truly included, um, and um, and and that we are their champion, right? Uh, that regardless of who's leading the conversation, that we are the multicultural champion, and we know that our consumer is leading uh, consumption in many areas. Uh, yet they don't get spoken at the same level or with the same uh, expenditures as other segments do so we need to make sure that they are recognized and, uh, and that their value is is respected uh, so I would say work hard uh, surround yourself with smart people 
Uh, I always wanted to be the, the hardest working person in the room, and I am seldom the smartest. Uh, and that is fine. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And I think to me that has worked well for me in my career. And, uh, and hopefully it will continue to work well because I, I think I'm still starting. You've been named the Hispanic Ad Executive of the Year, Orange, Orange County Business Journal's Business Person of the Year for Marketing, and you were named one of the 100 most influential Hispanics by Hispanic Business Magazine two years in a row. The list just goes on and on. So before your successes, you were a little girl with a dream. Tell us a bit about your childhood and your first job in advertising and marketing. Well, uh, I was born in Puerto Rico, I'm the oldest of four, and uh, I was always the good student. <laughs> and, uh, but I never really knew what I wanted to, to do. I thought I, want, I wanted to be a teacher all my life. And I remember my teachers always saying, you don't want to be a teacher because teachers don't make any money. <laughs> uh, and I guess sadly is still, still the case, right? And they kept going, no, you should be a doctor, you should be an attorney. We didn't know anyone in advertising, right? Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, so um, I just was following her along and I got to college and started studying pre-med and, uh, and realized this wasn't where my heart was. Mm -hmm. And on a lark, I just decided I'm gonna go to School of Communications and see what that's about. Because I like to write, so I thought I was gonna be a journalist. And 30 years later, I'm here. I, I fell in love with advertising uh, as we started studying at, at, in college. And then I did a, um, I started my career as a, uh, as a temp doing a maternity leave for someone in traffic at a, a McCann Erickson in Puerto Rico. And uh, I never left. I just, I found, I fell in love with, with the industry and, and have found a really great uh, big life in advertising. That's amazing. Okay, so if there's one thing we all know, it's that everything in life isn't always perfect or rosy. And actually at one point, you were told your career would go down the drain if you went into Hispanic marketing. So what made you disregard that voice? And what can you share with others about listening to their inner voice? Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm stubborn or what, uh, but I usually, uh, I listen, but I end up always saying, it ultimately has to be my decision. Uh, I hate anything done by committee. And uh, um, when I was in Puerto Rico at that point, and I uh, had been growing really well, you know, in the agency, but I realized having lived in the island for so long and, and, and worked in, in advertising there for about, I think it was seven years, that if I really wanted to understand how our clients worked and, uh, and what really kept them uh, awake at night, I needed to know how the corporate offices worked and they were all here in the US, as you know, Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States. So every client there was attached to, to the US. So I thought I wanna go to the US and work a year or two, that was my plan, to understand how it works there and then come back and be able to be a better service to my clients. So when an opportunity ar arose uh, here in California, I was an independent agency at that point. Uh, I thought, I'm leaving. I was living with my parents at that point. So it was like, was, it was easy. I think two weeks after they made me the offer, I moved with two suitcases. Uh, and, but you know, at that point, someone that, that I respected a lot said, you know, you don't want to go there because the Hispanic market is, no one pays any attention to the Hispanic market. But I thought, well, I need, to, I need to see that on my own. And uh, my first meeting here I, I met with a new client, we met with everyone from the CMO down. And you know, we had 25 people in a meeting to talk about Hispanic marketing. And I thought, well, you know, this is a little bit more important than we thought it was. And uh, five months, six months after I moved, WPP bought that independent agency because they also saw, they saw the value of, of the Hispanic market long-term. And, um, and, and I thought, well, you know, I, I think I made the right decision. If Martin Sorrell thinks there's a future on this, I cannot be wrong. So, and, and here we are today. That's really good. And what would you tell others about listening to their inner voice? I would say trust your gut. You know, no one knows you better. Listen to others. I mean, it's fine to listen to others, uh, but you need to trust your gut. 
you know, so many people, I mean, as a, as a working mom, I had people that told me, oh, your child's never going to, you is not going to know you as their mom, you know, you need to be doing something else. And I was like, well, maybe there's, maybe they're right and I'm wrong. But my gut said, no, you know, this is my child and he knows how, how loved he is and he knows how his mom works hard. Uh, so I think through the years I've learned, you know, I'll never have anyone to blame but myself. Because that's the other thing too. If you're making a decision because you're trusting your gut, you can't blame other people, right? It's, you have to own that. Hopefully it's, it's a good outcome, but if it's not, it's, it's your, what's your mistake? It wasn't someone else's. And that you can live with, right? You can, I don't think you can live with thinking, oh, I did that because such and such told me to do it and now I'm stuck. Right. So uh, that's, at least that's, that's helped me well. And, uh, and, I'm, and I stick to that. It's like, I want to make decisions that feel right for me. I want to make decisions that I can sleep well at night with. And if that's the case, then, you know, the outcome will be right for me, regardless of what it is. No, I 100% agree with that. We have to make our own decisions. So I want to talk about diversity and inclusion. Um, and... Quite frankly, improving diversity and inclusion is something that many companies still struggle with, both in our industry and outside of it. So how can agencies ensure that they get inclusive marketing right? Um, I mean, that's, a big, that's a big question, right? <laughs> and I think, uh, I think through the years, we've done much better on, the, on diversity than, mm -hmm. uh, than you know, we have in, in a long time. I think inclusion is probably where we need to work a little harder on. It's not just about checking a box and say X percent of our staff is, is multicultural. That's not enough, right? Because then you need to make sure that those voices uh, have the same weight as the non-multicultural voice. That they, when they're sitting in a meeting, it's not just to cast the meeting uh, in a multicultural light, but it's really that those people feel... Um, listen to feel respected and that their voice carries the same weight as as others um and that's something i think as an industry not not just us i think everyone needs to work on that area i i do believe i mean from being the only woman in a room uh many years ago to now you know many times women outnumber men in in, uh, in meetings in our industry uh but i think we still we still need to do a better job of of uh inclusion, uh, of respect, uh, of understanding the differences and that those differences are what make us, make us better as a group, right? Um, and, that, and that we truly do uh, value and seek that counsel um, because it's not, it's not it's just, it's a nice thing to see on paper and it's never gonna change. And what are some of the roadblocks that you know, we continue to face as we try to improve diversity and inclusion in marketing? Um, I, think, I think the biggest roadblocks is going back to, to not being inclusive, to saying, yep, it's, it's to paying lip service to, to the, the uh, DNI, right? It's just to say, well, yes, you know, once a year, X percentage of our, of our troops are uh, Latino or multicultural people of color, uh, and leaving it at that. I think that's the, the biggest roadblock. The biggest roadblock is, is making sure it's uh, not having enough people of color at the senior levels mm -hmm. um, because we, people are not looking up and we, we need our people to look up and see themselves in the people that are leading them. And I think the biggest roadblock right now is that there's very little of that still. We're better than, than we were, absolutely but we're not near where we need to be. And unless more young people uh, aspire to those positions and see that they can achieve, uh, attain them, um, things are not gonna change. Right. And things may get a little better, but they're not gonna change really for good. Right. We have to work on this diversity pipeline at all levels, yes. Absolutely, and I, and I do like to spend, invest uh, my time yeah, as much as I can on, on helping uh, specifically Latino students because I was as the to my Harvard, any really multicultural uh, mm -hmm. students because one, we need them to be excited and, and 
uh, and want to join our industry and not other not go to other industries um, but then also see that that there's a career there's that there's not just a job for them but this truly is a career uh, that it can be an exciting and challenging and, and rewarding career and that there's growth potential for them and, uh, and I, I do invest a lot of a lot of my free time uh, in, in, in reaching out to students and uh, in local in our local area and make sure that they consider this uh, as, as a career it's a good career choice for them yes and that seems to be a common theme in this conversation when I asked you what your favorite campaign was you mentioned the organ donation and just now you mentioned giving back to Hispanic students so that seems to be a big part of your life you're a founding member of Hispanic advertising agencies, um, currently known as CMC um, at Cal State University Fullerton. You serve on the Dean's Advisory Board of the School of Communications. Um, you are on the Agency Advisory Board for the school's Practical Advantage Agency, and you're a founding member of the Latino Communications Institute, and you currently serve as Vice Chair. So why do you choose to give back? Uh, as I have a strong faith and uh, as the Bible says uh, to whom much is given much is required uh, and I feel that I have been blessed in, in my career I've had a wonderful challenging and rewarding career in advertising uh, and I want other people to experience the same thing I want other people to know that hey even if you were not born uh, in the US we are we are uh, American citizens, uh, but uh, we, even if you were not born in the U.S., even if you were born speaking a different language, right? Uh, that there is there is opportunity for you, and more than opportunity, that there is that you have the right to make to make a change a, a difference. Uh, that your voice is needed, and uh, and that we need we need people that look and, and sound like us to make sure that everything will be more inclusive. Um, that it'll be easier for them than it was for me when I started, uh, and I and I and I don't even dare to say that that I had you know a, a difficult. You, know, uh, you listen to some some other people when some of the the uh, the things that they had to deal with in their career, and I and I feel blessed that I didn't have to, uh, but it still wasn't easy, and I want to I want to make it a little tiny easier for for those people, especially in the beginning because it's that first door, opening that first door can be very, very hard. Uh, and, and I hope that I can help open doors for, for the people because it's the right thing to do for our business as well, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we need to develop the business, our employees of the future. And they're right there in our yard, in our backyard. So uh, it's, to me, it, it's, it's my responsibility to do, to do that for, for them as people and for us as, a, as an agency, uh, it's my responsibility to make sure that we have that pipeline of, of young, multicultural, diverse talent that wouldn't, that wouldn't know or wouldn't have had the opportunity otherwise. Right. So earlier you mentioned um, that someone said, oh, it's going to be really hard to be a mom and balance your career. So I actually want to touch upon that a little bit more. Um, you actually received one of the Advertising Women of New York's Mother of the Year Awards, right? So, haha to whoever told you you couldn't balance it all. But tell us a little bit about how you balance your career and, you know, motherhood. I mean, I think balance is a very tricky word. And I always tell the, the young moms in our office, you know, that I don't know that balance exists. Uh, you need to, one, you need to make sure that it's work, working for you. Don't let anyone tell you what works and what doesn't. Uh, you can listen to advice, but again, make it your own. Uh, my son and I, uh, it's been the two of us since he was seven. And, uh, and I was working, uh, working full time, traveling all the time. Uh, I had a great nanny, which I still do. She takes care of me now. Uh, and uh, so I didn't do it on my own. I had good, good uh, support at home uh, because I always knew that he was safe and well cared and loved, uh, and that I I never had to worry about was he going to love anyone else more than me now because he always knew I was his mom. 
And, uh, but you know, he knew, and I always told him, I said, I'm a happier mom because I work. Mm -hmm. And he always understood that even when he was little. And, uh, and I found things that, that worked. And there were times that I knew the balance was this way towards work. And there are some times that I had to go the other way, right? So, so there's really, I don't think there was ever balance, <laughs> but, but it worked uh, because I always try to make sure that he always knew that when I was home, he was the most important thing. And, and when I was at work, that I was focused at, at work. Uh, people knew that if I was in a meeting, you know, the one call that I would always take would be his, no matter what. And the clients understood that too. Uh, and that's something you need to remind, remind yourself uh, and remind others that clients are human too. It's okay. They understand. They go through the same pressures. And I would tell them, hey, I have to take this call because it's my son. And no one, no one ever said no or gave me the evil eye, right? They always understood it. And, and actually uh, uh, appreciated the fact that I would speak up. And, um, and, and I always made it a point of telling others, hey, you know, I'm a mom, you know, and I have a little kid, and we would talk about that. So people understood that, that there was that other dimension to you. Um, and I always, and everyone knew always knew that, that he was the most important thing for me. And what I was doing, I was doing for him. Uh, and, uh, and it's, it turned out okay. I thought I was going to break him when he was little. I always thought, oh my God, I'm breaking this child. There's going to be something wrong with this kid, but I did not break him. So, and I know, and, and he would, when he, when I got that award, he had to do video. Um, and he said that he never remembered me not being home. Mm. And I told him, I said, you know, I was not home every night. And he says, I don't remember that. I only remember you being home. And I remember you cooking and he goes, well, bringing home bring food <laughs> uh but again, then that's what i always i use as an example to our young mothers at the office i said you know he's not going to remember she's not going to remember the day you were not there um they're going to remember all those times that you did that you were there that you loved them and that you spent the time with them yeah. you know? and sorry it was such a long answer but it's one of those things that i could talk about for a long time because it's it's I'm very proud and very happy of my, my life and my son. No, but it's a really good answer and it's a really helpful and relatable answer. And it's so good to see someone in a leadership position like yours, normalizing parenthood and, um, you know, saying that it's okay to say that you're taking care of a child. Um, so thank you for doing that. And that, wraps up our conversation for right now. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to chat with us um, and being a part of our creative month. And we really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for including me. I was very excited. And you know, to the young creatives that may listen to this, you made the right choice. You know, there's an amazing career. Uh, it's, it, it's challenging and it's rewarding and it's fun and it can be crazy uh but i cannot think of something better to do uh and so you know don't give up there'll be challenges out there but never give up and thank you for including me on it thank you ingrid enjoy the rest of your day i'm gonna take thank another you too. <laughs> <laughs> let me know how it goes <laughs>